Right, in today's auto watch, Stellantis is releasing their third quarter profits. The automaker is facing another setback as revenues fell 27% in comparison to last year. Global shipments of new vehicles also dropped by 20% as the company looks to cut costs. Joining us now to discuss today's headlines is editor of Headlight.News, Paul Eisenstein. Great to have you here, Good Paul. Good to be with you. So will Stellantis be able to recover from this, this latest decline? They have got to work hard, and there's going to be growing pressure on the entire management team. We've already heard that the CEO, uh, Carl Stavaris, will not uh, be brought back after the current contract ends in 2026. A lot of us are suspecting if he doesn't get things handled in the next quarter or two, he won't make it to 2026. Well, wow. looking at these numbers year by year, it's not looking too good. What are some of the reasons that you think they're seeing such a serious decline? Well, one of the most interesting reasons is something that Carlos Tavares, the CEO, said himself earlier this year. Arrogance. I think the company thought everything was on track and did not want to listen when, guess what, the wheels started coming off the rails. They built a lot of expensive products, too expensive in a market where people are looking for less expensive vehicles. Uh, they made some mistakes in terms of the type of products they put out. Uh, and I think, frankly, one of the biggest concerns is that this European-based management team led by Tavares has really underplayed the importance of the U.S. They made a lot of misreadings of what it would take in this market, which is where most of their profits come from. So what does this mean for union members and dealers who have already expressed frustration? Speaking of dealers and union, it's unusual for both of them to speak out publicly, take aim at management, and they've both done that. That's how troubled the situation is. Of course, investors aren't happy at all with the latest numbers and what they've seen for the last year. Um, it's going to be a real question because you're going to see management put pressure on the union to try to cut costs wherever possible. We've already seen uh, temporary layoffs, and I'd be very surprised if we don't see some more in the next couple of months unless they start improving sales. You know, they just have too many cars. They have to cut production. Uh, we're also going to have to see the uh, uh, management team trim back. We're going to see further cuts there. Uh, it's going to be tough times. And sadly, one of the things I expect is that too many of the cuts are going to come here in the United States. Uh, oddly enough, the situation in Europe is such, with government pressure and very tough unions over there, that they are going to be even more resistant to job cuts. So the U.S. is going to feel the brunt of all the pain. Mm, like a ripple effect. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the need for cutting production in some areas. Also for Ford, they're cutting the F-150 Lightning, yeah. which we reported earlier here on the news. Uh, what does this mean for them? And also just moving forward, we're seeing so many different automakers having to hit pause on production because the sales just aren't there. Yeah. Now, the industry as a whole is doing very well. You may, you, you may recall it wasn't but days ago you reported about how good General Motors was doing. It's looking like it's going to do record numbers. This is a type of market where if you make a mistake, it's like football. You talked about the Lions. You don't have to make many mistakes and the whole thing falls apart. Well, that's very much the case in the auto industry right now. If you make mistakes about product, in General Motor in Ford's case, overpricing some products, uh, maybe not having the right segment available, you are going to be hurt. Ford has completely realigned its EV program. And unfortunately, uh, it made some mistakes with the, with the Lightning. Brought in too expensive and over-anticipated the type of production it was going to achieve. Uh, it didn't come near the sales that it, uh, it expected. So now that they're sitting on the inventory of the Lightning, from a consumer's perspective, if you're on the fence, if you've been thinking about getting this car, is this a good time now to get the car? Oh, yeah. It very much is. Dealers are cutting very good deals, which, by the way, is very upsetting to me because I own one of those. Oh. And I paid <laughs> you list, can't go back and, and get I a... And I paid list price <laughs> yeah. for it. Get I happen fun. to like it. I'm not trying to puff the vehicle. I like it, and I'm glad I own one. Um, and right now, it, it's interesting. There was a study that just came out today uh, by Auto Pacific, uh, research firm out of California. And one of the things they said was that EV sales have been really hurt by politics. You know, it's become a big issue between Democrats and Republicans. Uh, they expect that with the end of the election, 
will hear less negative about EVs and people like myself and others who own them and happen to like them a lot, well, that word of mouth is going to start see, start helping to rebuild EV sales in the months to come. Interesting. Okay, so we'll watch to see if it clears the air and also leads to some change there. Exactly. Paul, thank you so much for your time. Paul Eisenstein with Headlight.News.